we dealt with the scripture on Friday night and the statement connected us from where we were stopped to where we was going into our next phase. And the concept was that once the Lord delivered us out of darkness into the light, there are certain things that God demands of us. Not expect, he demands it of us. Because he brought you out for a purpose. Oh, I like that. Tell somebody I was brought up for a purpose. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> now, Apostle Boyd, better known as John Haywood Boyd, born in 1926 in um, Bracey, Virginia. And um, a man that God chose to change lives, and he's been responsible for changing literally millions of lives. By the way, of you know, outdoor tent revivals, radio, television, that he had a passion for what God called him to. Grew up on a farm, picked cotton. At the age of 16, he picked enough cotton to get a one-way ticket on the uh, railroad line to come to New York. And the story is that when he got to New York and got on the 8th Avenue subway, he had one buffalo head nickel left, just one buffalo head nickel. And he always says, look at me now. And so that's how he started, picking cotton and being a farmer. Well, New Great Bethel uh, was founded in 1972. Um, my father used to own a construction firm. And one day he came in the house and he says, I'm gonna put up a tent. So I thought he was gonna go into circuit business. That's the only tent I knew when I was like 16 years old. And he said, uh, no, God told me to put up a tent. So uh, his story is that he went out in the winter time of 1970, that would be probably 1971, found this tent. And in 1972, he put up an old raggedy brown tent on the corner of Linden and Francis Lewis Boulevard. And that, that became the beginning of what we now know as New Greater Bethel Ministries. And I thank God for the years that I was able to see the manifestation of the power and the glory of God. But, you know, tonight I just want to go back a little bit because some people don't know. And I know many people have heard about you from Prophetess Bynum, one of your spiritual daughters. And she's been on TBN. She talks about you. But I want to go back for a second and kind of talk to you where it all started at. Amen. Because you're from the country. Amen. Well, can we have a good hallelujah? He was a father. More than anything else, when he died in 86, I think people remind him, we, you know, we use the word apostle, meaning that he had this personal relationship with God. But he was a father. The Bible says you have many instructors, but few fathers. And he just had a whole lot of wisdom. And today we use that same wisdom. We, we say it over and over again. My father was probably a greater teacher than he was even a preacher. But, you know, he was fiery. I mean, he was like a little fire brimstone. <laughs> um, he was passionate. You know, he was a passionate teacher, preacher. Um, as they would say, he get down when he came to the Word of God. And, you know, and I saw my dad grow over the 40 years that he pastored. And every year he got better and he got wiser. You know, with age comes wisdom. So a lot of his wisdom was applied in his teaching. You always had great sayings. God can do more for you in five minutes than you can do for yourself in a lifetime. Now, if you remember that on Friday night, everybody say Friday night. Is that right? How many of y'all was in church Friday night? You're sitting beside somebody and raise the hand, ask them where were they at? Huh? If you're sitting beside somebody and raise the hand, don't look down. Don't look guilty. Keep your head up. Nobody will know what you say. He led by example. You know, some people lead like a, a travel agent. They send you places they ain't never been before. They tell you to do things they don't do their own selves. But he led by example. If he told people to do something, then he would be the first one. We put up the tent, he's the first one on the job. We do repairs in the building, he's the first one here in the morning. You know, he always led by example. And so it wasn't hard when it was your turn. You know what you had to do. Lead by example. My dad was an exceptional businessman. Before he became a pastor and God led him into the ministry, he was an entrepreneur. I mean, when I was growing up, he worked for, uh, he had his own business doing like iron railings, like the railings that go on the stoop and fences. He owned his own company. 
uh, then he got sick, and for a while, and he, he had double pneumonia, so he almost died. So uh, while he was sick, things didn't work out. He had a partner, they kind of broke out. And then when he got better, he went back in business again. In fact, he used to, he was a manager for a paper called the Long Island Press. And that's where I, I had my first job at the age of seven, delivering newspapers, 325 newspapers every day. I delivered winter, spring, summer, and fall. Yes, it was rough. But he believed in a work ethic. So he did, he did the newspapers, then he went back in the construction business. So he did like, you know, stoops and sidewalks and driveways, retaining walls. That was the kind of work he did until he got called into, into pastoral ship. I had a desire to become a, a, a builder of buildings. See, but when God conceived you in your mother's womb, God has purpose and plan for your life. And as long as you operate on a purpose, plan, and will, no matter how much money you make, who you get connected with, inside of you, there is something that's missing because it does not fulfill God's purpose in your life, you see. And the Lord allowed me to go into sales to learn how to sell so I could come back and sell y'all Jesus Christ. We've been here for almost 50 years. So I believe it was hard work and diligence. And my father, he, again, he believed in the work ethic. That's why I had a job at seven. Okay, he believed, you know, there were three people that my father didn't like. Lying folks, lazy folks, and late folks. So he was, when it came to his doing his business, he was always about the business. And so I think the church thrived because he kept working. He worked no matter what the situation was. He was passionate. I mean, he was up early in the morning. He worked consistently, no matter what the situation was. And God ordained me in that sort of so day and told me to go forth and begin to pastor. And we began to pastor in a little storefront church in 1972, praise God. And the church that we opened up, about the size of this choir standing here now, just in the back of me, praise God. And we did not stay there but a very short while, praise God. And the Lord took me right down the street from it to, to a, a, a master building that took almost half a block. And said, I want you to bring my people and establish a ministry in this church. There's a big theater on Linden Boulevard. And I, and, and I said, Lord, okay, we will do it if you said do it. And we went there and began to search that place out. And I had a little preacher here from California at that time running a revival meeting with us. And I told him, I said, brother, I want you to go with me somewhere this morning. I said, I want to claim this building for the Lord. And it was a theater, and it still was showing the picture in the theater. And we walked in the theater that morning and walked right by the ticket booth. We walked by, and then Peter didn't pay no money or nothing. The little fellow, he got nervous and started shaking. Because he, he, didn't, he didn't know where I was going without doing. And we walked around that building that morning and laid hands on that building all the way in the name of Jesus Christ and claimed it for the Lord. And on Easter Sunday of that same year, we marched to that building with no money, praise God. But God gave us the building, you see. To help people, to love people, to see humanity rescued off of drugs, prostitution, off of um, poverty, homelessness. He was just passionate about people. Oh, you better catch it, you better catch it. See, see, some of y'all are upset with the rain, but you don't understand what God's about to set you up with. is down in Lodibar and he's down there he, uh, 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 he, he, he was down in Lodibar and, uh, uh, and, and, and the thought is why is he down there because right now the, the whole concept is anybody who takes over the kingdom they make sure that every, all the predecessors everybody before them they wipe out the whole family 
so that they don't come to really affect their power. You come today thinking that this is a conference. You come today thinking that I made it to woman that was loose when this is really a holy moment. This is really a bunch of women that God has chosen to sanctify a moment in time. Who am I talking to? The devil is shaking right now because we're in this place. Who am I talking to? The enemy is angry with you because you decided to spend your last time and come and spend time with God. You wait till you get back home. You wait till you get back home. You were a force to be reckoned with. Never mess with a woman that spends time. When they change their confession and said something other than what the Word of God says, they empowered the thing and gave it the authority to kill them. So the only thing you're going to do this morning, and when I looked up the true meaning of prayer, the Hebrew meaning of prayer, it said to conquer, to be courageous, to be strong. I like this one. To play the man. To play the man. Prayer. So when the Bible says man ought to always pray, he wasn't talking about always all day. He said man ought to always be the conqueror. We have to get to a point where we understand what God has called us to be and who God has called us to be. And there's a certain place that I've been, God has really been taking me to as of late. Um, I've been doing a lot of 5 a.m. prayer with my father as of late. And um, the last 5 a.m. prayer uh, that we had, uh, God really, really been dealing with me in my spirit about where we are as believers and where our faith lies at as far as our belief in where we are.